So many of us have already seen the 800 milliwatt rush tank. This is a 30 by 30 VTX capable of outputting 800 milliwatts. Uh, but rush just managed to shrink it down and keep the output power. Really? Introducing the rush tank mini. Does this thing really output what this one does? So in the packaging, you get a MMCX antenna. You get a coil of wires, and this is black, white, red, and yellow. 20 millimeter stack screws, and you get six millimeter screws and four nuts. And finally the VTX. And it comes with a plastic housing that you can just place right over it. So this guy goes like this. So your completed VTX will go like this. And they put the, I'm gonna assume they put these smaller screws so you can just fix the VTX on its own and then stick it to something and the stack screws are if you wanted to mount this in the stack on top of the flight controller uh, this plastic top fits relatively tight so you might not need all the screws but anyway this guy measures in at and I'll measure with the button. 29.24 by 28.9. And at the thickest portion, 3.23. And the stack holes are roughly 20 by 20. So they have crammed a lot into this little VTX. All right, so if I show you on the back here, um, there's not much on the actual back. This is uh, reference version 1.2. We've got our power button. We've got a frequency button. Right here, we've got our audio button. Uh, this is for your microphone. Then you've got your positive five volt. This is for your five volt out to your camera. You've got your ground out to your camera. You've got your video out to your camera. Then you've got your SA, which is your smart audio. Then you've got your DC in, this is to power the device. And then you've got your ground. And to power this device, they're saying anywhere from seven to 36 volts. That's ridiculous. Seven to 36 volts, that's eight S, two to eight S. Um, so, this is safe to run on our 6S rigs, which is crazy too, because it's a little 20 by 20. So if you're building like a super light five inch frame and you got a 20, 20 millimeter stack, this might be your guy. Uh, this does have a pit mode. It's got smart audio as we saw here, and this is truly licensed through TBS. So um, good on you guys, Rush. If, if we, now if we flip this over, you'll notice we have gone from uh, two, four, six. We have gone from seven pads down to five pads. So on the other side, we lose the five volt and the a smart, uh, the five volt and the audio. And this audio, I believe, is your microphone. So these five, if I go from the top, so we got ground, TC in, VTX and then ground. So I would have broken out one more pad here for the positive, but that's just me. Um, that's just that. So our antenna in this here, this is the MMCX connector. 
And here's a good look at all the components on the board here. And it looks as though they have coated it with a conformal. It's got that nice kind of sheen to it. Um, you, know, you can actually see kind of the waviness to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is coated. So this output pad on the five volt is a one amp max. It's got power levels set to 200 milliwatt, 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, and 800 milliwatts. So four separate power levels. It's got 48 channels, including race and now low race. Uh, it's got the availability for the external mic, which again is your audio. Don't confuse that with your SA for smart audio. Interesting naming convention, but it is what it is. And they say this weighs 4.46 without covers. I'm gonna get you an actual weight here. So according to my scale, it's five grams. Um, just know that it probably doesn't go any lower than that. So there's that. They say it's 4.6. I can't measure that low. So there's that. So not a whole ton of bells and whistles on this VTX, but just an overall power hitter, it looks like. I don't like to just take company's words for it. We're gonna go ahead and test this. Uh, and to do that, they don't, like I said, they don't really include uh, already hooked up wire, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop some wire on here quick and we're gonna test this guy. So we wanna get this to race five, 25 milliwatts. So when we plug this in, this top light here, this is our power level light. A green light signifies uh, 25 milliwatts. And as you can see, we're down here at 21 milliwatts. We are also not on the right channel though. If we look down here, we've got a red flashing light and a blue flashing light. So the red light over here signifies that we're on a channel one because it's flashing. So in order to get to channel two, we're gonna hit this one once and that signifies that we're on channel two. Uh, to get to channel three, we got one red and one flashing. Channel four is two that are one straight color. And then channel five would be this. This is two lights and one flashing. So that's channel five. Now we wanna get to our channel we want to push and hold this button for about two seconds and that will move this from a blinking to a straight full-on blue and what we want to do the first the first here this is band a so we're going to push and hold it for a second and that gives us a straight solid color blue that's band b now we're going to push and hold it again that gives us one flashing, so we're at the third. So that's band E. Uh, next is gonna be band F. So we're gonna push and hold for two seconds. That should give us two solid blues. And then finally to get to band, race band, push and hold again. And that should give us two full blues and one flashing. So if we verify, we should have uh, two reds solid and one flashing which we do and two blues and one flashing so that's race five power level this is uh green signifies 25 milliwatts and we have that so if we look over here we are outputting at 21 milliwatts and if I go ahead and measure temperature, we are at 135 degrees. So let's go ahead and move this up. We want the power button, which is to the right. So we're gonna push and hold that for a few seconds. Wait for that light to flash then give it one tap. That changes the color. And this is supposed to be yellow. It's actually a red and green light at the same time. Um, and then I'm just gonna push and hold that again to solidify that. That is our 
200 milliwatt setting. And as you can see, we're down here at 1.8, 1.86. Um, pretty good, pretty good. And again, that's this is not a cold start. This has been on for a while and we are at still 120, 132 degrees max. So all in all, we're doing well. This is uh, what do I expect from a VTX to at least come close to their stated outputs, uh, especially when at temperature. So next is we're looking for a red light on top. So we're gonna push and hold this for two seconds. Wait for that yellow to flash, which is actually green. Now we're at red. And we're gonna push and hold this for two seconds to solidify the red. And this brings us up to 400 milliwatts. And this is supposed to be the 500 milliwatt. So clearly we're bouncing off a limiter or something to that effect. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this for a little bit, let it cool off. As you can see, yeah, it jumped up to 154 degrees. If I test the back, uh, seems, seems any of the, the hot side is gonna be this side up. 140, so it is coming down. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit, let it cool off, and then we're gonna check that uh, setting again. So the 25, I'm happy with at 21, and the 200, I am happy with at 180. Uh, 400 off of 500. Could be a little bit better, but again, I think it's because this unit was hot and we were screwing around changing channels and whatnot, so. Um, there's that. I just want to see what the initial output values are with this a little bit lower than temp. Okay, we're down to about 120. So this has an operating temperature of negative 20C to 90C, and I'll put those conversions to Fahrenheit right here. That's good. I'm going to roll with this. This is at 96 degrees, and that's... Uh, to me, that's an acceptable temperature to begin this test. So if I plug this in, we're at red, and this guy immediately jumps up to 470, 460. Um, so if this gets down to room temperature, I, I'm positive this will get up to the, uh, the 500 milliwatt output. And just, uh, just to give it the benefit of the doubt here, yeah, 440. 440, 430, not bad, not bad, I'll take it. So let's go, we gotta change this light to pink. So to do that, we're gonna push and hold the frequency button on the right until that's flashing, and then we go one tap, and that's supposed to be pink. That's really like a blue and red, but okay. And we push and hold that for two seconds, and that locks it in place. And now we're gonna see this should be around 800. And we're a little bit under, um, 571, 140, 142. So we, 147, we could be already hitting that limiter. Cause this thing is, is getting into temperature fast, 500 milliwatts. So it is sort of stable. And so as you can see, as the temperature rises, this thing does limit heavily. So I suggest keep it cool. Yeah, we're already 200 degrees. So my suggestion is to keep this guy cool. Uh, if you can, put it on a switch. All in all, a decently outputting VTX for its size. Um, I know we have like the TBS Nano that'll do 400 milliwatts, but to get 800 out of a a 20 by 20 and really those values are around 600. Um, I can see the easily doing seven. I'm gonna let this device cool down. And we're gonna check that one more time before I let you go. Okay, so I've let this guy cool down. Uh, it's set to the highest power output right now and we're at uh, roughly 92 degrees and the ambient temperature in here is 82 so yeah it's starting to get a little warm in here so but I've 
lower the, uh, let this cool down to a reasonable temperature and we're gonna check this highest output, uh, hopefully non-limited. So if I can set that in such a way that you can see that as I plug this in. And this should ramp up. This should be around 800. Okay, we're, we're a little bit better, 700. Um, I imagine at like 60 degrees, 50 degrees, whatever, at a low room temperature, this would be a lot better. But 700 initial output, if you can get this thing going through the air and cooled, that's, that's acceptable for a little 20 by 20 like this. Um, I, I'm good with that. And then you saw it before, we even just we limited down to 500 and that's gonna be pretty good while you're just sitting waiting to take off. Um, so there's that. Let me unplug this guy so we're not cooking it. And shut this guy down. Yeah, it does get very hot very quick. If uh, We're already up at 140. So highly suggest putting a switch on this guy if you can, if you have room for the build. Uh, I'll be showing a video soon as to how to set something like that up. Um, but if you're going to be putting on this on a, a four inch or three inch build, you may or may not have the room for such a thing. But um, you know, it's it's. I advise it if you can fit it. If you can't, it's fine. Once you get up into the air, this thing will start putting out its full power again, which. I don't see it not getting up to 800 milliwatts in perfect conditions. It's not like some of the VTXs where I've tested and they're wildly under. So, so one thing I failed to mention earlier is the mounting holes in this are M3, but the mounting holes in the cover are M2 and it's supplied with M2. So you can mount it with the M2 screws, but if you want to mount it with your M3 stack screws, uh, you're not going to be able to put the protective cap on, or you might have to drill that out and make a mess of it. But most of us, I think, are going to mount it in this configuration with nothing covering it to keep the device cool, because clearly we can see that it does get hot, and when it gets hot, it ramps down pretty quick. So there's that. Uh, but with that, I'm... I'm happy with this little VTX. I, I, I really didn't expect it to put out 800 milliwatts. So seeing it put out over 700, uh, I'm happy with that. That's that's acceptable for uh, the the size quads that we're going to put this on. Some of you are going to be crazy and put it in a five inch build and put this massive battery on it and call it a long range rig and have fun, have fun. Uh, most people are not going to do it. Most people are going to put this in a three inch rig and rip around and we're not going that far having the 800 milliwatts is good we can punch around trees and through buildings and whatnot so uh all in all a great little vtx it looks like i'm not gonna claim that it's waterproof but it does have conformal coating on it so there's that i'm happy with this little vtx so if you enjoyed this video click that thumbs up button if you haven't done it already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because we only get to do it once and it's fun. I'll catch you later. Peace.